Welcome to another video. Whenever you get a limit problem with absolute value parts and you have this temptation to plug in the target point, don't. Resist the temptation because it might just be a trap. Oftentimes, students would tell me that you can just plug it in, you'll get the same answer. Well, that's why I would not give you a point you can plug in. As in this case, you can plug in zero because this function is not defined at zero. You can see the denominator. If you put zero in the denominator, you, zero. you don't want zero in the denominator of a rational function, right? Also, you can plug in one. If you plug in one, you're going to get zero too. So there are certain points you can just plug in, even if it looks as if you're going to get your answer. So pay attention to that. Secondly, Sometimes even when you plug it in, what you think is the answer might just not be the answer. For your limit, always rewrite the absolute value function in such a way that you can choose what you want. That's what you call freedom. Let's get into it. So the first thing you should do is rewrite every part that has absolute value, okay? So we have the numerator here and a part of the denominator. So what we have would be something like this. We're going to say the absolute value of x cubed minus x will be equal to what is inside, just the way it is, x cubed minus x, and the negative of what is inside, x cubed minus x. Now this is it. Every absolute value function has itself equal to what is inside or the negative of what is inside. We just need to know when this is true and when this is true. So this is true, the top part, x squared minus x is true when what you have is positive. This is a way to write positive, okay? Now, when is this value positive? Well, it's always good to find the critical numbers of the function and then you draw your sign chart and determine when it's positive. So here, we're gonna have, what are the critical numbers? Let's do it here. We have x times x squared minus one. And this is, let's say, equal to zero just to find your critical numbers. And that's x squared, sorry, that's x times x minus one times x plus one is equal to zero. So the three critical numbers will be x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals minus one. So those are the three numbers we're going to use in choosing which regions satisfy the condition of this being greater than or equal to zero. Well, it can be equal to, well, this may be equal to zero. It depends on what x is. So what we're going to have is this. Okay, remember, we know that x is not equal to zero and x is not equal to one. Those are the two numbers we cannot include in our uh, points. Okay, so I want to write that so I don't forget. So here, we're going to have these 1, 2, 3 stacked, x, x minus 1, x plus 1. We're multiplying them, and remember, when we multiply them, we want the answer we get to be greater than, where is it? Greater than 0, okay? Greater than or equal to 0. So here, this is what we have. This is our number line. So our number line has minus 1, it has 0, and it has one. So we have four regions that we want to test. We're looking for all the positive ones, the ones that are positive. So what do we do? We're going to say, let's go here. Let's put x here. I'm going to pick a value to the left of minus one, which is going to be, let's say, minus two. Minus two. Minus two minus one is minus two. So this is negative. The answer to this is negative. Minus two plus one is also negative. So if I multiply three negatives, I'm going to get a negative. I go here. Remember, we're looking for the positives. If I pick a number here, it's going to be a negative number, right? Because it's less than zero. That negative number, an example, would be negative 0 0.5. Negative 0 0.5 minus 1 is also negative. Negative 0 0.5 plus 1 is positive. So if I multiply two positives and two negatives and a positive, I end up with a positive. So this is good for what we're looking for. We go here, pick a number, let's say 0 0.5 is going to be a positive number. 
0 0.5 minus 1 is a negative number. 0 0.5 plus 1 is a positive number. So this region is going to give us a negative. Two positives and a negative is negative. And the final region is going to be any number greater than 1. So I pick 2. This is going to be positive. Pick 2 here is going to be positive. Put 2 here, it's positive. So all positives gives me positive. So the only time x cubed minus x is greater than or equal to 0 is a non-negative number is when I stay between minus 1 and 0 or when I go beyond 1. So I can go here and say this is only true when minus 1 is less than or equal to x and x is less than 0 and also when x is greater than 1. Those are the two regions. See, I cannot include 0, remember? So I might make this a hole here. And also I cannot include this point. But I can include this point so I can shade it. Ha 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 ha. Because it's not a problem. Now, we go to the bottom one. It's easy. Once you've done this sign chart, you just need to copy and paste. So this region is going to satisfy what we want. But we want something less than 1. So when x is less than, sorry, minus 1. And where's the negative region again? Between here and here, from 0 to 1. We have 0 is less than x, and x is less than 1. Okay, mission accomplished. Now, we go to the bottom. There's another one that has absolute value. You want to write that. So the absolute value of x is going to be the same thing we did here. It's going to be x when x is greater than or equal to 0. Well, x cannot be equal to 0, so let's remove that option. And then it's going to be minus x when x is less than 0. There's not, nothing to solve here because it's just one x. Here, we solved it. Okay, let's take the limit. So our point of interest is at 0, right there. So, but because this is a piecewise function, you can't just say, I'm just going to plug it in. You have to choose the part relevant to 0. What part of all of these pieces you have is relevant to zero? And because it's piecewise, we have to take limit from the left and limit from the right and compare them. If they're the same, we have a limit. If they're not the same, the limit does not exist. I'm sure you've heard that before. Okay, so let's do it. Now, because we're approaching zero, let's take the limit first. Let's take the limit as x approaches zero from the left. Okay, if you're going to zero from the left, which piece will you pick here? You're approaching zero from the left. You're looking for numbers that are less than zero. Just close to zero, but less than zero. Ta -ta -da 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 -da. Here, x is right there just before zero. So this is the part we're taking. So you're going to be replacing the top with this portion. It's going to be x cubed minus x. Now we go to the bottom. It's going to be x cubed. This one doesn't have a problem. This is the one with a problem. Now, what version do we pick here? You're going towards zero from the left. So you're going, this is the one you're going to pick because x is less than zero. So we're going to have minus x. So this has minus already, but we're going to replace this with minus x. So see what happens. This is the limit as x goes to zero of, um, if I factor the top, I'm going to have x times x squared minus one. This is going to become x squared plus x, which I can write as x times x squared plus 1. Right? And I can cancel out the two x's so that I know that this is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 from the left, okay? Which is not really necessary. So since I already picked the function, um, this is going to be x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, can you plug in 0? Yes. Plug in 0 here, you end up with minus 1 over 1, which gives you minus 1. So we have a one-sided limit from the left. What you need to pray for is that the limit from the right is the same as this, and then you know you have your answer. And if, it does, if it's, they're not the same, you still have your answer. Your answer will be D and E. Do not enter. I mean, does not exist. So we go to the next one, the limit. As x approaches 0 from the right, now let's go back and choose what portions. We're going to approach 0 from the right, so we can't use this guy. We're looking for values of x greater than 0. Oh, it's this guy. See, x is on the right of 0, 
So this is what we're going to use to represent the top, minus x cubed minus x. And then we go to the bottom, it's going to be x cubed minus what is greater than zero, this one. This is the guy we're going to use to represent the absolute value of x. As you can see, it looks like the top is just the negative of the bottom. So this is going to be the limit as x goes. Wait, come on. I can just cancel out as x goes to zero from the right of minus one, which gives us minus one. Let's go. The two limits are the same. So the limits exist. So we say the limit as x goes to zero of the absolute value of x cubed minus x over x cubed minus absolute value of x is equal to minus one. Since these two are the same, I'm not going to write that. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.